This morning, he was informed two American fighter planes had engaged a pair of Soviet-made MiGs controlled by his arch enemy. Mr. Grow. Now, several days ago, I received... Welcome to Viewer's Choice. Your selection is about... Discussion at a conference in Paris have often come out to take a look at U.S. operations. Fresh chicken makes the best chicken. Big 23s approached in a hostile manner. Hello guys and welcome to a new video today by me Vulcan. I am super excited that Warning Order or Warno has finally been announced. I found out about the project just under a week ago and I've never been so happy to see a game such as this come to light. It's the successor to Wargame Red Dragon that everybody has been waiting for. There is loads to go through, so let's take a look. I'll be pulling all of the information from the official Steam page, so feel free to go check it out for yourselves as well. But so you guys have an overall idea of the game, it's basically Wargamer Dragon with Steel Division 2 quality of life, AI and graphical improvements. It's also planning to have division style battle groups and army general campaigns, much like Steel Division 2. Now let's get into specifics. The time period is around 1989, with a Cold War gone hot scenario that faces NATO versus the Warsaw Pact. Much like Eugen's older titles, you'll be using a battle group of units to play out skirmish battles on dynamic tactical battlefields, from 1v1 all the way to 10v10, either against players or AI. There is also extensive single player planned with multiple game modes including, of course, Army General. Battle groups will be able to be made from six factions. These are the United States, West Germany, the United Kingdom, and France on the NATO side, and the Soviet Union and East Germany as part of the Warsaw Pact. The US and Soviets will be the two playable factions in the initial early access, with the rest following at a later date. There is planned to be over 600 units in the game which come as part of various military formations and brigades. These can be used to form your battle groups. When making a battle group you can choose your economy much like in Steel Division 2 and customise your troops apparently which is really cool. I'm not sure if this is to the extent of Broken Arrow or not but I guess we'll see. Further on the Steam page, they confirm there will be four Army General campaigns based around the Folder Gap, which will give you access to hundreds of military units and formations. They also mentioned there will be scripted scenarios that will focus on captivating stories. To me, that almost sounds like the old Wargame European Escalation campaign. The game will be using a new version of their Iris Zoom engine with updated graphics and of course combat simulation. They mention a dynamic frontline. 
I'm unsure if this is the Still Division 2 system in the tactical gameplay, but it's probably more of a term for how the game plays because in a screenshot this is not shown, but rather the traditional sector capture game style of war game. A frontline system may be used in Army General though. Off map is also confirmed to be coming to this game. It's something I'm personally unsure of, but I'm sure it'll be fun to try. Finally on the page, there is mention of co-op, which is awesome for those who like to take on challenges with their friends. And there is confirmation of the 1v1, 2v2, 3v3, 4v4 and 10v10 battles. Last but not least, all the quality of life that's been added over the Steel Division series will be added to this game, including commands pre-deployment, rules of engagement, smart orders, and I would expect the line of sight tool. That's everything they've written about summed up, but there are a few screenshots that are on the Steam page that are of particular interest outside of all the eye candy. The first showing the gameplay. In this screenshot, we can see the classic Wargame Red Dragon sector gameplay. The blue sector is being held by a command vehicle in the top left. I assume this is skirmish, so unless they have a separate frontline game mode, we appear to be going back to the Wargame formula for ground capture or conquest. Vehicles also appear to have visible health again, like in Wargame, with the reload circle above the icons when firing. Units can be stressed, because you can see both of the Motostrelke units are stunned, and there appears to be a timer for that as well. Taking a look at the UI at the top from left to right, we see what I assume is the requisition menu, then the amount of points you have, then the income, which in this case is zero, probably due to testing, then a timer, implying income will arrive every minute as opposed to continuously, Next to that, it appears to be a flag counting system or uh, how much the sectors you are capturing are worth. Then next to that is a bar which accumulates points until one side wins with a percentage to victory on the right. On the far right is just your game time and your speed controls for single player. Then you can see the aircraft window which appears to have moved from the bottom left of the UI to the top right. But I'm hoping like something like that is customizable. That would be really cool. Then under that is a very blue minimap. <laughs> it doesn't appear to be very clear at the moment, so hopefully that's going to be made better by release. Uh, but underneath the map, you have your multiplayer pings and then menu and feature buttons at the bottom right. The leftmost button when active is most likely showing unit information on mouse hover. Then moving right, you have the show orders button. Uh, which is highlighted, and you can see that that's showing the orders of the units on the map. Next to that is the line of sight tool, because it has the same icon as in Still Division 2, so that almost confirms that it's going to be there. Then you have the text chat button and menu or settings button next to that. Overall, the game looks to be in a very playable state, and to me, that is super exciting. But if you missed it in the trailer, early access to the game will be open from the 20th of January, which is not long at all. Of course, that might be delayed, but fingers crossed. A couple more screenshots I want to look at. One appears to be the armory, and the other the battle group customization. So starting with the armory screenshot, you can see all of the filter settings, much like in Still Division 2 and Wargame, on the left and top side. And then on the right, you have the information about the unit, or in this case, the AH-1F Cobra. On this unit card, you can see the price on the top left, then the category of the unit, and then something called unit value. This appears to be a shorthand way for people to identify how modern a unit is. This little symbol is shown on the bottom right of icons in the gameplay screenshot too. Most appear to be green, some blue, which are maybe higher value or more modern units, which would make sense because the M1A1, of course, is more modern than the M1 Abrams. But back to the information card, you can then see armor and weapon statistics. These appear to be laid out much like the War Game series, more than Still Division 2. I am hoping, however, that more hidden information is shown on this card or maybe somewhere else for those more hardcore players. 
as from what we can see it's just pretty similar to what we had before. It's also worth noting that fuel is something that us still Division 2 players are going to have to worry about again, since total fuel and autonomy are on the unit cards. Onto the final screenshot of the battle group system, at the bottom you can see it appears to be extremely similar to still Division 2. Divisions have a number of activation points they can use to fill a battle group. Since no activation cost is shown on unit cards, I'd assume this is preset relative to the number of cards per category in each division, again like Steel Division 2. Furthermore, each division appears to have an offensive rating, the third armoured division in this case being A, or the highest. In Steel Division 2, this was used to determine how good a division was at attacking, as opposed to a more support role. But either way, I'm definitely interested in getting a deeper dive into the system, just to see how similar it really is. For those with keen eyes though, Warchat is indeed in the bottom right, and I'm sure you'll want to open that at your own discretion. And that's about it. Warning Order is here, and it looks amazing, and I'm super, super excited to get my hands on it. When we see more, I'll definitely come back with more content about the game, but until then, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video, Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Yeah,